So that's how it is. And if there's a change that needs to happen, it's because we put wrong data in at the school district. Not that we are right at the school district and the state is wrong and we can't fix it because we can't get the data changes to the system. Does that make sense? So even if Mark, can you put that in a little bit of... If it's not processed quickly, it what, what, she's, good. what she's saying is accurate for the last uh, yeah. historically because integrity would run and they shut the system down. Uh, as of January, we split the system so integrity runs separately. We had some bugs in integrity because when you take a system from one box and put it in another, you're going to it wasn't designed that way, so we got bugs. We're running integrity right now, and in the background, system's still up. Uh, it should be done in seven days. In the future, it will run every night. Uh, integrity will run every night. You know, and again, call me if it doesn't work, because IT's not a perfect science. Uh, you should go home at night, it runs, you come in the next day, you have validated data, and that's what the SAIS integrity reports that we just put online today will let you do. Now, we talked about the commitment to knock your socks off service. It involves you all a little bit. At some point, we're going to start to survey school boards, superintendents, IT users such as yourself. So when that survey comes, we would ask you to take a, take a second and fill it out and to have very specific comments about what we need to do to improve. And, and I promise you this, as we do those surveys, I will read every one of them. And those aren't words vibrating the air. I was on the city council in Chandler from 84 to 92. I still have stacked up on my uh, bookshelves all of the cards that came in from citizens, and I still go over those occasionally. I've got stacks of these things. This is what I've devoted my life to, to government that serves people. And it's, it's always a journey. You know, I've, we've taken entities from 6% excellence to 63. We've taken them from 28 to 81. Okay. We're hoping that now, before I was just a participant, now I'm at the very top. We're hoping for a faster pace, but we have, like you do, extremely littered, uh, limited resources. But we, this is, this is the life we live, and so if you'll take a minute to fill those out, we will take time to read them repeatedly until we understand them. Well, one issue that we have suffered over the years that I hope will be resolved at some point is when these communications are sent to the districts, if they're sent to the superintendents, if they're sent to the business managers, that they get to us, the people that are doing the work. Because oftentimes what happens is a memo, something comes out that you need, it doesn't get to us for a week or more. And then we're called on the carpet saying, why wasn't this taken care of? Well, I have yet to see the memo. Well, I would say this, before you all leave here today, there, need, there should be a piece of paper, and if you would leave your email address on it, we would love to have that, because I it's obvious that you... Problem. You know, various ones of us have signed up on different distribution lists and have yet to see an email. Well, we, um, you know, we've been there, we've been there about 36 days. <laughs> And uh, I started in there to drain the swamp, and I've got an alligator on. <laughs> this group has been very good about circulating this stuff to each other so that yeah. we get caught up. Well, if, if you could provide this today, we have, you know, we would love to have this as a, as, as a communication list. It's obvious that you all are intense users of our system, and we would love to be able to communicate with you. So, we would love to. Uh, Rose? I think that I'd like to sort of solicit this team, because I just got Elliot sent me an email earlier this morning, and he'd like to see an external SAIS working panel. That we, I mean, we can't, obviously, you can't, if we had everyone on here in that panel, nothing would be done. But if, if we could, maybe that'd be something you could take up on, and it's not something that, and that you create the panel for us. And we will use that panel as the focus group for everything we do and say is changes. And of course, we'd expect that panel to disseminate down to the rest of the team. This is a very broad swath of, of your whole state. This, this team 
is the uh, uh, is a pretty amazing group. Well, I think, and you could be helpful to us in our other missions. We're we're talking about putting in place a whole different way of thinking about accountability at the school and school district level, and so th this can be a partnership that goes both ways. Occasionally, we might ask you to assist us as we conduct other aspects of our mission, and and pr our primary focus is you all are doing the work every day, and we need to be doing the best job for you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. How long do you have, sir? I have plenty of time for this. Thank you for that. Do I have to call Merle? Three issues that are kind of interrelated. Um, first thing is you guys took away this daughter came from us, and you're asking us to do a whole bunch of new states changes and then you took away all of the customer service so if something happens we have nobody to call anymore i mean if we could you call explain them, the star team uh, i don't think this okay is the star team used to be a help desk that we can that we can contact related specific safety related issues if you had issues related to ell or sped or adm whatever it was you had somebody that was very educated that you can call and get an answer generally within a couple hours or that day on what's going on right now it's always just based around the state right and everybody what we have now is the help desk which has you know like three or four really overworked ladies that if you call them you will stay on hold for a minimum of about four hours if you're lucky you can get somebody and then if you email them you're lucky to get a response in within two days and then they can answer your question you can't go back and forth because a lot of a lot of us when we're processing or working with our safe data we just have one little thing we have a question on to finish the upload, and we don't have anybody to ask, you know, so I'm calling different people to school finance now to try to, could you please just help me with this one little thing? I'm sorry to bother you. Um, so if we had some form of customer service with Star Team back, we would really love you. Um, no. <laughs> now, here, here, is a, here is a little bit of my challenge. When I got into the department, I was shocked to find out I had 482 employees but of those 482, we had, I think, 123 plus or minus who were state employees. I mean, that's, what if we run elementary schools with 123 employees? That's to run everything. It was a bit of a shock. The, the budget cuts that hit us sort of nuclear bombed a lot of things. All I can tell you is, in this extremely resource limited environment, we know that this is ground zero, and we're working nonstop to try and move resources in that direction. But it is very tough. It's like in, in your schools, you're having to peel off things that are already stressed over here to move resources over here. So we, um, I don't know if somehow in a t if you all can help us on this a little bit, think through, but we're, all I can tell you is we're going to be working with Mark, we're going to keep focusing things in that direction, and we're going to pray that we don't get hit with another budget cut. The other thing was, is about, I would say four years ago, uh, back when Helen Kibo was in charge of the IT department, um, she used, and I realize there's budget cuts, you may not be able to completely do this, but she used to go around the state and, you know, before the next year, we knew what was going to happen on the technical side for states and what was upcoming, and that was super helpful. And they would also write a newsletter, like once every month or two months or whatever, to kind of, and it would come down to the, uh, to our level so that anybody who needed it could access it from the AP website and you were asking about ways of communicating and that newsletter, you know, if nothing else, was was very helpful. Let me, uh, thank you for the, uh, the uh, pitch because we just started. March 1st will be our first newsletter. Uh, we're working on it as we speak. I didn't even know that was thank you for beating that. Uh, I did not bother. Uh, but the, that is our first newsletter. Uh, in order to, and it's going to say what IT does for you and, and from the Department of Education. Now, sometimes it feels like what does IT, IT do to you? <laughs> we hope to change that, but there's some significant, on the call center, uh, we do have three, uh, we had two, one left, and the, the director that runs my whole department answers phones, Terry Mendez. Uh, so we just got another person starting next Monday, that'll make it three. 
I've asked to staff another one, that's four. We're going to try to get it up to, but again, we have to train them. What good is a person that answers the phone that's, uh -huh. <laughs> So, all this, this is, this is happening. Uh, we did hear, I mean, I, I used to measure a call center on how many calls were vacated. Uh, and we had rules that bonuses were touched in DHL. Could you imagine calling a package company and being a whole four hours? You wouldn't call UPS. Uh, so we're not there, but we are measuring. And yes, it's horrible. Uh, we lose more calls than we answer. And that's not a satisfactory, but it gives down to the money that's available and that I'm allocated to the, uh, that we get to spend to help you. But we are listening. We do hear your frustration. And I do want to get out to more of the schools and talk to them. Uh, right now, I'm in the middle of a fire. Uh, as you can tell, we've only been there a month and we've made a lot of changes. Uh, I'd say six months before I even get my head above the work. Of the, the, uh, and then maybe after that, I can spend some time coming and talk to my customers. But I, I need a management team around me, just like you do where you are. They can do the job when you're not there. Right now, that doesn't exist. I sort of have to do that. So that's, that's where we're at. And, it, and if I might, just for a second, we are primarily a regulatory entity. So when we, for me to get up here and say that we're going to transform to a culture of service, that is a real challenge in a regulatory culture. We've, I've worked with other state agencies and we have done some amazing things. The banking department to go from 28% excellence to 57. The registrar of contractors, they went from 36 to 81. But it takes, it takes time, and we're hoping to do it in a more, because I'm right at the pinnacle and, and able to keep pumping this message, we're hoping to move it faster. But there will always be that regulatory function there. So there will come some time when you say, you know, that, no, 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 he said he was here to serve me, and here he is doing this to me. That's going to be an ongoing nature of the, of the beast. The key is to make the regulatory touch as light as possible and as helpful as possible. We're not here to sledgehammer you because there's a rules violation, but to help you to see what, what you need to do to come into compliance when there are rules. And, and also to work with the legislature to make sure, and our state, or our federal people, to make sure there's as few rules as, as necessary to get the job done. I got a, I got a couple questions. One, mm -hmm. one has to do with the, um, uh, the, the limit to upload. Uh, first of all, it's very comforting to hear that cases will actually be online all the time. That's a very critical piece. As far as, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as, far as the data being uploaded, I, I, I'm aware that there is some limitation where if you have a large set of data, we have to manually break it into three megabyte chunks just to upload it. And I believe it was kind of arbitrary just to set something that would, that states could actually process. So I would like to know if there's any way that we can get an unlimited upload or, or a very large upload to the system. Is that the only question? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, what he's talking about is, is that there's a throttle set to try to make it so for non techies uh, there's a throttle set on the front of, uh, of our box that allows only a certain amount of upload. And we still have the problem when there's multiple of you that are trying to do this, it breaks the system down. This is part of the architecture that I talked about, this 1998. This was not a problem in 1998. It is today because the large amount of data sets a lot of amount of changes. This is, uh, be, remember I just mentioned that the governor gave us some money to build the sandbox in order to test if this works, which we believe it is, as best as IT would believe, and if you're from that business, you understand that it's not perfect. Uh, we will have that fixed by the end of the next, by the uh, summer, end of the summer of this year. Uh, that's when our goal is to implement the full new frame. That would mean faster hardware. Integrity would run in five minutes every night, not seven hours. Uh, uh, aggregation would run in ten minutes. That's the goal. Uh, but we need the new hardware. Uh, the governor has funded uh, the sandbox, which is our test mechanism. She is committed to fund the rest of the hardware based on our results. I didn't want to sign up for the whole thing if it doesn't work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it sounds like we'll, we'll be opening to unlimited. Yes, sir. Okay, good. 
the, uh, the, the other thing was, I, I don't know if this could help, but I know that